Hello and welcome to yet another project. It is called Object D and I've been developing it for a few weeks now. The functionality is very similar to MC Script. I wanted to have a tool which assists me making data packs. MC Script is my own programming language for that. But why would you invent a new language if some great minds already done it? No question, MC Script is great, but it has its limitations and it's not really consistent. So I came up with a framework. A framework is not an entirely new language, but a frame around a language, in my case Dart. That also means you have all the great features of a programming language. And this framework gives you a ton of utils that you would implement yourself otherwise and makes the data pack development very easy together with a powerful programming language. You never heard of Dart? Well, it's a fairly new programming language from Google and it combines all the great things from Java, C++, JavaScript and many more to a, in my opinion, very convenient and modern syntax. First off, this new framework is not easier than MC Script. It's an abstraction degree over MC Script, utilizing classes, widgets and types. But that also means that the syntax and the source code is clearer and better understandable. So when we take a look at the, the source code of MC Script, we can see there are pretty long files with complex structures all in one place. And in the end, I had many problems and bugs, which were very hard to fix in this mess of code here. To fix that, I wanted to build the whole structure much more modular. So with the import syntax, you can add third party packages easily and you can use your modules wherever you want. So in object D, it looks more like that here, that each feature has its own file and class and it's much more organized and simpler to develop. Dart itself is also insanely fast and reliable. It has clear parameters and always generates the same result, which was also a big issue with MC, MC script. And it will be more powerful. I'm planning to add all my current generators, for example, the crafting generator, the block generator, as a simple package in object D. So I've been comparing object D much with MC script, but it is not really comparable because these are two completely different things. In the end, they do the same thing, but the implementation is very different. And of course, I will continue the course on MC script and uh, bug fixing. The core of object D is a widget. Everything in object D is a widget. And with widget, I just mean nested objects. So for example, we have a project right here. And this project has a property called child and that accepts another widget called pack. This again requires a list of files and inside of a file we can add another widget called command and run a simple command. In the end there is this tree of widgets which all end with a fundamental text widget which actually outputs some text. So that's the core idea of object D, and of course the whole thing is much more complex. In code, this might look like this. We use basic widgets with some properties to make up this tree. For those who never dealt with programming, there's a really nice course for Dart that teaches you the fundamentals right here. But I will also explain everything in the in tutorials, easy to follow. And you can also implement your own widget with own functionality and return a widget tree internally. But we'll take a closer look at this later. The whole framework is split into three layers, might be even more in the future. Down here are the fundamental basic widgets, like a command, a loop, a group and many more. The next layer is built upon this basic widgets and provide wrappers for the Minecraft commands, for example. And then there is a high layer with an animation API, for example, or my crafting tools that use own packs internally and can be defined by simple properties. It's also very likely that these high widgets 
have their own package because not everyone will use them. And what's also very interesting, you as the community can publish your custom widgets and it integrates seamlessly into the framework. But now we all want to see it in action, don't we? If you want to follow, install the whole thing with my documentation in the description, I'll start with everything already set up. So this right here is the data pack folder of a world. And inside of here, I have a folder called source. And here I just have an empty Dart project. So just a Dart file on the pub spec. And I added the object D dependency in my packages file. So in our index.dart file, we just have to import object D from the core. And each Dart file can have a method called main. And that just says that we want to run this content inside of these brackets when we start our application. So in here, we want to create a new project and we just use the method, method create project. We could see Visual Studio Code already gives us suggestions here. Of course, you have to install the Dart plugin for Visual Studio Code. And we can also see if we hover over that over this, this needs a project. So let's create a new project in here. We just call it project and some brackets. And of course we also need a semicolon here and it says the name is required. The name is just the name of your Datapex folder. So this is where you can use spaces and upper, uppercase stuff. And we also want to have the property target here. And thus, this just says where to generate a new project. And I want to have it outside of my source folder here. So I just use two dots and a slash. So we can save it. And I opened a console window in my source folder. Here I can just say dart index.dart. And it already says that it generated our object D example folder with a pack.mc meter, a tick.json and a load.json. So we can see this new folder in the data packs folder here with everything a very basic data pack needs. But now we want to add some content in here and it already says parameter generate is required. So we insert generate here and this accepts a widget. Remember everything in MC script is a widget, but as a project, we need to insert a pack here. As a pack, I mean the namespace, for example. So if we run slash function, we have to insert a namespace here. And that's, that is our pack. And we can have multiple packs in our project. So this pack requires a name again. So we give it a name, let's say object D and we can hover over it. And there are a few optional arguments here. So we can add a main file, we can add a load file and we can also add a list of other files. So we just want a main file. So we say main column file and we have to give this file a path. So the name and where it sits. So we just name it main. And we can see that our file has a child property, which again accepts another widget. So let's do that and insert a command here. This command accepts a string. So we just insert our raw command as string inside of here. Let's say hello object D. Now we can compile it again with dart index dart and we can see it tries to generate our data pack object D and it generated a main.mc function here. So in our generated project in the function folder, we have a main.mc function and it says hello object D. So with this bit of code here, we defined a whole data pack project and inserted our first command. But what if we want to insert multiple commands here? 
Big surprise, there's also a widget for that and that is called for.off and this requires a list of widgets and a list is and a list is defined by square brackets here and this just says well, for each item of this list here I want to insert it as child into the file. We can insert a command here again and we can also insert a second command and say hello to what's really handy with Visual Studio Code. You can just press F5 and it creates this launch.json file here and we just want to say launch index.dart, save it, press F5 again and we can see down here it actually ran our entire project just by pressing F5. And in our main.mc function we can see two commands. And of course there are many widgets you can insert here. Just take a look at the documentation at divatus.com slash object D and you will find useful information on that. What if we want to execute another file inside of our main file here? We can add a file everywhere we want. So we can just say file and since we want to execute it in our main file we can use a sub constructor and that's just dot execute and that will also directly execute our file and let's give it a path of test and another child and let's use a command wrapper for say and we can either input a entity in here or a message we will use the message and that's just a string this is a message what object d does it scans the whole project before generating the content and it looks for files anywhere in the code so we can just nest files inside of files and it, they are still generated so let's press f5 again and we can see there is a new mc function file here and it says this is a message earlier in this video i talked about custom widgets and they are really useful because now we have everything in this main method and that is not the idea case. Let's create a custom widget for that. We just say class because a widget is always a class. Let's name it my pack. And that is important. You have to extend a widget to create a new widget. And inside of here, we need a, moth a method called generate. And it already suggests to add a generate method here. So let's do that and it will generate a lot of code here. Let's just remove this part here and this generate method should return another widget tree. Let's move our entire pack here into this custom widget. We just say return our pack and don't forget the semicolon here. And then we can just say generate my pack. So if we run it now, it should generate the same as before. So that is a really basic project in Object D. Tell me in the comments what do you think about this framework. And of course there's going to be more videos on Object D. And if you don't want to miss them just subscribe and we will see us in the next video. Bye.